Ace Attorney Trilogy, developed and published by Capcom. The Phoenix Wright uh, Ace Attorney Trilogy encapsulates the first three Phoenix Wright games, so that's Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All, and Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. Uh, I haven't played any of the Phoenix Wright games up until now. I've only kind of seen them in like memes, and uh, it's the Phoenix Wright sometimes shows up in the Marvel vs. Capcom games and things like that. Uh, so it was interesting to play it. So if you're not familiar, the Phoenix Wright games are basically, you play, you take on the role of Phoenix Wright, who is a lawyer slash somehow also an investigator, and you are given various trials to, uh, you know, to figure out who, who done it, so you do your investigations, pointing and clicking around the environments, and it's a bit of visual novel, plus a bit point and click, um, find the object kind of game. Uh, and it's quite humorous, like it's a very funny game. Even just the first couple of trials that I've done so far, they, you know, there's a, there are a couple of laugh out louds and there's a couple of just chuckles and so on. You know, it doesn't take itself too seriously, even if some of the even if some of the trials are a bit weird. Uh, I really like it. I can see why the Phoenix Wright games are so popular. So the original games I think came out early 2000s, 2001 I think was the very first game. So the HD version, you know, it just kind of sharpens up the images a little bit. Reminder that the original games I believe were Game Boys or Game Boy or DS titles so you know they had limited processing power so like the artwork is fine it does its job and the sharpening on HD is good there's three games in this that's quite a lot I believe each game has six trials six episodes and they go on for you know long enough the first one's quite short because it's the tutorial obviously but the rest of them are quite long the investigation thing can take a couple of different branches you know finding all the objects you can mess things up and you get different dialogue for that you know it's fun to meet all the characters and that kind of thing so I'm enjoying it Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy HD is available on Switch, PS4, uh, Xbox One, and also PC. This is My Time at Porsche, developed by Patea and published by Team17. My Time at Porsche is a kind of life sim thing, like uh, Sturdy Valley, Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, that kind of thing. It was originally a Kickstarter project, entered Steam Early Access beginning of 2018, and is now available on lots of different platforms. My Time at Porsche seems interesting. I do get the kind of feeling that it's not actually done in that it kind of exited early access a bit early just to get onto the console market and maybe get a bit of a cash injection for more development, I don't know. Like I am I am enjoying it. If you're coming at it as a kind of farming game, it's not really a farming game, it's more about construction work, it's more about building things. Uh, for like, you get commissions to build various things to give to the townspeople to increase your social rank with them. It's a bit dystopia when you put it that way. They're tasked with creating various things for the different townspeople to kind of, you know, get a better relationship with them. Kind of in the same way in Stardew Valley, you'd give them gifts or you'd get, you know, uh, you get contracts on the notice board and whatever. Same thing, you know, it works the same way. Uh, my time at Porsche kind of expands on that in being 3D. <laughs> this is not, you know, it's not a 2D Stardew Valley top-down thing. You know, you have your own house and you go about your daily life accruing money, you get better equipment to make better things, to make more money, etc. That's the way it goes. I'm not very far into it, so I guess there's a lot, like there's a lot for me still to unlock. 
but they're like noticeable like polish issues in that there's no there's no voice acting where it appears there should be voice acting the ui is quite bare bones it looks it looks very basic it looks like it's the built-in ui for the engine whatever engine they're using i think it's unity and then there's like performance issues like the the animations kind of hitch they pause when they're doing background calculations for things you know it's just things like that to just make it feel undone or not undone unfinished kind of thing i am also somewhat regretting getting it for the playstation i probably should have got it for the switch and i might still end up getting it for the switch if i see any more updates or patches or something like that it should also be noted that the pc version is much further along than this than this current um console version i don't know if they're planning on I don't know if they're planning on catching up or what, or what the deal is with the console version, but right now I can't really, I can't really recommend it at the moment. As much uh, and as big a long a wait as it's going to be for Animal Crossing, we might just still need to wait for it. I mean, if you can look past the polish issues, there's a lot here. Like I can see already on the various PC forums uh, for the early access version and like people really like it, but I can't, like I kind myself can't really get past its lack of polish, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I will persevere with it, but there are definitely other games that are more interesting to me at the moment. My time at Porsche is on PC, it's on uh, Xbox, uh, PS4 and Nintendo Switch. This is Falcon Age from Outer Loop Games. Falcon Age is a kind of first person falconry game, I guess. Basically, you take on the role of this kind of pseudo native woman, Ara, and uh, she has a pet falcon who she uses to gather food and attack enemies and so on and so forth. The game is designed mostly for PSVR, and uh, the footage you're seeing here, where indicated is for is is from my PSVR. I could say about Falcon Age, it's a bit simple. Um, it's a bit bare bones. I give them credit in that the Falcon is great. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play around with. Your interactions with it. There's a dedicated kind of pet button, where you can just you know do fun things with the Falcon. You can you know guide them around the environment, send them off to attack things. They fly back to you. They drop things in your hand, or they pull things out of your hand. It's pretty cool, honestly. The Falcon is really good. It's just kind of the rest of the game isn't so great. Um, combat is kind of easy. <laughs> uh, and I, I guess that owes to the fact that it's in VR. They don't want to press you too much. Story-wise, uh, it doesn't quite live up to its kind of loftiness. It's basically trying to say that this, this big corporation took over your planet uh, and you're kind of trying to fight back and take the planet back. But... Um, it's going for a lot more gravitas than what the game, well, the in-game stuff would, would uh, imply. The robots and things that you're fighting are very kind of comedic, they're very cartoonish. You don't really get the sense that this is a big deal, <laughs> basically. There are a lot, but to be fair, there are a lot of options for gameplay. You can play with the controller, you can play with the PS Move, you can play outside of VR. So if you don't have VR, you can still play the game. You can still play the game with the Move controllers, you can still play the game with the DualShock, etc. There's a lot of different things to do. There's a lot of convenience features for PSVR, like like teleporting and blinking when you turn and things like that. You can always turn all of them off if you're very comfortable with PSVR. Like, it's a good experience in VR. It's just a bit bare. Uh, outside the Falcon and the Falcon's kind of uh, animations and interactions, they're very, very well done. It's just the rest of the game. The game world itself is a bit empty uh, and you spend a lot of time backtracking through empty areas so it just makes it more noticeable that there's not a whole lot going on that being said it's not a full price game so you know it would be it could be worth a look but yeah uh, this is i believe exclusive to the playstation because it's psvr because it was designed for the psvr so i believe it's exclusive to the playstation but you can check it out there is a stream of me playing this game on the channel somewhere so you can have a look at that as well
This is Heaven's Vault, uh, developed and published by Inkle. Heaven's Vault is a kind of adventure game and puzzle game. In it, you take on the role of an archaeologist named Alia, who is accompanied by a robot partner or assistant named Six, or that she named Six. And you are initially set on uh, attempting to find the location of another archaeologist or another uh, scientist uh, who's gone missing, and you're you know you're trying to find them. The main gameplay involves uh, attempting to decipher and learn this kind of hieroglyphic language that the game has invented uh, to kind of help you solve clues and to point you in different directions uh, and to kind of bounce you around the world map. You go off to different moons and different different areas is probably the best way to think about it. I've never played anything like this before, I guess. I mean, it's in, a, in some ways it reminds me of the kind of old point and click games, you know, the old point and click adventure games, even though there's no pointing and clicking and there's no like inventory management and stuff like that. But the language deciphering and the language learning is really interesting. Beyond just the kind of pattern matching, you can kind of infer a lot of the words based on older words. Like you, if you find the word for person, and you find the word for holy and then you can find the word for emperor because they think they were holy you know it's really interesting you find the word for place and you find the word for life that means you find the word for help like for home because they, they combine the two words place for life things like that it's, like it's really cool i really like that it sounds kind of nerdy but it, I, and it is <laughs> but i thought it was really good uh, the story can take kind of branching paths and that you can sort of choose dialogue options you can choose which locations to visit first and what to do in those locations. Uh, items you find you can choose to hand over to different people and so on. Uh, use them to further explore the, the nebula where the, the game takes place. Uh, the story of course does open up a lot more after the locating the other person. Uh, you, you're taking on this big wild ride all around the nebula trying to decipher this hidden language or this ancient language. Uh, it's really good. Uh, the second time through the game, you get to carry over your progress on that language, and the game itself kind of makes some of the puzzles a little bit more difficult, makes some of the writing a bit more challenging. Uh, they add extra symbols and things, so you actually get even more insight into the game plot and the, the game world and things like that. Uh, I really like it anyway. Heaven's Vault is available on PC and PS4. Katana Zero, developed by ASCII Soft and published by Devolver Digital. Katana Zero uh, is a side-scrolling kind of slash em up game. It's probably a bit closer to, to call it a perfectionist game. Um, basically, the gist of Katana Zero is that you take on the role of this katana-wielding assassin, and his job is to kill everybody on the screen or in that level uh, with his sword. Um, there's no health bar, so if you get hit, you die. It's instant death, like Hotline Miami. So the gameplay is to basically get through the level, kill all the enemies, and never get touched, never get hit. If you do happen to die, the game just kind of resets. It has a kind of in-game or an in-world explanation for that, in that your character is using this sort of time-bending uh, precognition drug. So he's, he's sort of planning out his route ahead of time, and any time there's a fuck up, uh, you just reset and he's like, no, don't do it that way, we'll do it a different way. So it's a bit closer to something like Hotline Miami, in that you sort of have to plan your route out. The world becomes, or the game level becomes a bit more of a puzzle than a, than a more of an action game. You know, you need to plan the route, what enemies you're going to hit first, who you have to dodge roll past, maybe I can pick up this item and throw it at that guy, do I have to jump over his attack, maybe I can slash that bullet, etc. You know, you eventually, you know, figure out your route, get through that level and then the game replays the whole level the way you did it and you get to say, yeah, I'm cool, I killed everybody, it's great. Uh, setting wise, it's kind of like cyberpunk or neo-noir, I believe they call it, which is cyberpunk <laughs> to me. 
Town of Zero is a lot of fun, but I can obviously see that the later levels are probably going to get very frustrating in the same way that Hotline Miami got very frustrating later on. But he, he, your character has a very limited moveset, so there's only so many things you can do, unlike, unlike Hotline Miami, where you can, you know, you have guns and bats and things to pick up. So you only really have your katana and something you can throw sometimes. Katana Zero is available on PC, uh, Mac and Nintendo Switch. This is Days Gone, developed by Sony Bend Studios and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Days Gone is an open world uh, kind of zombie survival game, or a zombie action game if you prefer with survival elements. In Days Gone you take on the role of a character called Deacon, Deacon St. John, St. John? St. James? Shit, I don't know, Deacon anyway, Deacon St. something, who's a biker dude, you know, just trying to live his life in this zombie post-apocalypse or whatever. Uh, or, or Freaker po post-apocalypse, as it's called, because they're not zombies. You know, they're not undead, exactly. They're just uh, infected with something that makes them uncontrollably violent. So plot-wise, uh, Deacon and his buddy, Boozer, are driving around, just, you know, doing odd jobs, trying to make ends meet things, just trying to survive. Uh, and Deacon gets wind that his wife from before the, the post-apocalypse, when I assume she's still his wife, might still be alive so he has to go on this big quest to try and find her that's pretty much the background of the game in between you're just making alliances with different different camps and you know different organizations i guess is a way to put it doing our jobs for them you know clearing out areas or going off bounty hunting and, and things like that the game gets a little repetitive i find like some of the missions or a lot of the missions are just the same mission in different areas it's just I gotta go hunt down and kill this dude. Now I gotta go clear out this might as well just be a bandit camp. Now I gotta go to this area and turn the generator back on, etc. You know, they just kind of repeat themselves. Or I gotta, I gotta burn out this nest of freakers, etc. It's just a bit samey. Deacon has a variety of different attack options. He's kind of got stealthy options where you can sneak up on people, a la The Last of Us. Uh, he's got uh, guns, like lots of different weapons. He's got melee attacks. Uh, and then he's got crafting abilities where he can make better melee stuff. He can make med packs and things, which is very Last of Us as well. You can almost sort of think of the game as The Last of Us, but open world and just not as tense. You know, it's a bit freer in, in what you can do. It's not nowhere near as difficult as, as The Last of Us, that's for sure. And that's kind of Days Gone. Uh, it's kind of its biggest weakness in that it doesn't really have much of an identity itself. It's sort of an amalgamation of a lot of different games. You know, it's kind of got it's kind of got a bit of State of Decay zombie world, and it's got Last of Us's crafting and melee stealth stuff. It's got fairly basic gun combat, things like that. It looks good, but probably not as good as other Sony uh, first party stuff in the recent years. Sony Bend uh, had been known for Siphon Filter up until now and then very recently it had been doing the Uncharted PS Vita games. So this is like, a, this is a pretty big step up for them and with that in mind they did a pretty good job I think. Like there's definitely some polish issues, there's some glitches, there's some bugs. But for a studio that's never done an open world game this is pretty great. Uh, one thing Days Gone does have going for it is the motorbike. Uh, that's your primary means of transportation. Like it does feel good to drive around on the bike and the bike is upgradable, it's craftable and things like that. One thing that is kind of annoying about the bike is it's very fragile and it just guzzles gasoline. <laughs> you know, you really have to keep an eye on the fuel meter because it's very easy to run out. And if you run out, there's no convenient way to refill it. You gotta go find a fuel container and fill it back up. And that might require a fairly long trek. Uh, another thing Days Gone has going for it is this hordes, hordes of zombies, hordes of freakers. 
where they have like just a lot, a lot of zombies, zombie models on screen at the same time, all chasing you in this kind of wave. Uh, and that's probably why the game doesn't look as nice as some of the other ones, some of the other Sony first party games, because they have to allow processing power for all these other freakers after you. The hordes are pretty good, and the, like, they can be quite threatening and intimidating. And I know there are, like, it's sort of an endgame thing that you need to actually get rid of all these hordes, so that's going to be fairly interesting. There's a lot in Days Gone, but it's, it's a lot of things that were in other games already. So giving it its own identity, I'm not sure it has enough. Like, it's a fun game, but there are better games, I guess is what I'm saying. The story is kind of basic. Sam Witwer, who plays Deacon, uh, does a great job, actually. He does a, he's a very good performance. It's kind of weird that he kind of plays two different characters. He plays cutscene Deacon, who's this kind of noble, uh, kind of self-sacrificing kind of guy who just wants to find his wife and, you know, he just wants to be, he just wants to do the right thing. And then he's got in-game Deacon, who's this kind of crazy uh, hermit muttering to himself. You know, he's extremely violent and extremely angry. It's kind of weird. There's a weird um, disconnect between the two of them. I think it's kind of funny, though. But he plays both characters, even though it's supposed to be the one character. He plays them both very well. Um, and that part is kind of fun. But yeah, it's just I've seen a lot of these mechanics in other games, and they were better in those games. And the guns and the horde... Oh, sorry, not the guns. The bike and the horde are very interesting but they're like they're not the main focus of the game so it does fall down in that aspect for me anyway but it's a big game and there's a lot to do in it so, you know it can keep you keep you busy anyway if you don't have anything else days gone is exclusive to the ps4 Those were some of the games I played for April 2019. Interesting batch of games this month. Uh, Days Gone kind of fills the gap of the AAA open world game that we kind of looking for, I guess, at the moment. I mean, it's a good game and I was kind of down on it in the video, but it's just because it has to follow like stellar first party titles from Sony like God of War and Spider-Man. It's a good game in its own right. It just obviously falls short of those two. Elsewhere, Katana Zero, I've got to play even more of it since uh, recording the part in this video. Uh, the story goes some interesting places. Actually, uh, the stream I was on, I stopped right before the story basically kicked in. So that was interesting. It goes to some really cool, really cool places there. Heaven's Vault, I didn't, I was kind of bouncing off it at the beginning because so many choices and so many different things that could be going wrong or I could be making the wrong choice and that always gets at me but I managed to persevere all the way through the game and it's it's really good I really really like it Phoenix Wright I'm glad that I finally get to play it you know I, I, I can see what all the hype is about that's great Falcon Age and my time at Porsche they just they have some interesting ideas they just don't really capitalize on them as much as I kind of would have hoped they did Falcon Age the Falcon is really good which is good because it's in the title and my time at Porsche just needs more time in the oven all. I think it'll be a very good game in about a year or two years from now when they've finally finished it possibly. Anyway, moving on to next month, games of next month, we'll be looking at A Plague Tale Innocence that's had a couple of gameplay videos drop now. So it's a sort of kind of medieval looking thing where plague, you know, it's plague everywhere, it's in the title, uh, and you're, I guess, escorting this girl across horrible plague infested lands like that. Uh, Rage 2 we'll also be looking at that seems like it's finally found its stride and in fa it's found the fun I guess. First person shooter looking forward to that. Also some VR titles we've got Everybody's Golf VR or Hot Shots Golf VR. I can't imagine there are too many people who enjoy golf on this channel but uh, I always like the Hot Shots uh, series franchise so I'm interested to see how it handles the transition to VR. And also Observation, which is, an, which is another VR game where you take on the role of a ship AI. So your interaction with the game world is through camera feeds and things like that. Uh, from what I've seen of the trailers and stuff, it looks really interesting. Elsewhere on the channel, I've started a playthrough of Sekiro over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash doomtrain5. So I'm looking to, do, uh, looking to finish that off. 
Probably some stage in May, we'll probably finish that and then looking to move on to some other game. Also have the weekly news recap that's also on Twitch that's recorded every Saturday and then appears on the YouTube channel Sundays. I am away next week, time of this recording next week, so Twitch will be a bit quiet, but uh, I'll be back then. And we'll be well back to a regu yeah, regularly scheduled podcast. Let me know what you thought of this month's video, the April games. Um, did you like them? Did you not like them? Did you think I'm way off on, on my opinions on some of them? Uh, and let me know if there's any games coming up that you think I should keep an eye out for or you'd like to see featured. Right, thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you over on Twitch, but otherwise I'll see you next time.